he uh, he would confirm the truth that was there. In other words, he I was of course. Uh, it's about the longing in each of us to see and be seen by each other, to, to fully connect with each other and to become present to each other, uh, to achieve that presence in each other's company that is mostly denied in our alienated, socially separated culture. The book is about that and about how social movements can, when they rise up, bring people into that experience of human connection. And when they have that experience, uh, it, it helps us to imagine a transformed world, a healed world, a loving world. Um, Michael and I had, our, his birthdays in February, mine's in January, we're the same age. We lived the same historical experience, he and I. And he and I both had the experience in the 1960s of this transfiguration of who we were, this coming into a kind of sight or awareness of how human beings could love and care for each other and build a whole new world based on equality and solidarity and community. Of course, there were many terrible things about the time as well, but we, that's also what we wanted to write about and talk about and try and show how our fear of each other and the legacy of that fear can undermine our social movements and how we need to build a spiritual dimension to our activism that fosters and deepens our interconnectedness to each other. So he and I would meet here right up until the book was published this year, right there <laughs> at that table. And of course, Michael had Parkinson's the whole time and for 16 years earlier. So he was like, he had to get in a comfortable position because Michael's approach to his Parkinson's was just to deny that it existed. He was damned if that was going to stop him from his revolutionary purpose. So uh, we would meet there and he would read the chapter. There were some things he really wanted changed and I changed them. But mostly he was an extremely affirming person who would agree with the stuff I just said here. I mean, this ineffable quality of experience that it was possible for us to achieve through transcending the way the world currently is. He believed in it, and it was that conviction that Michael had in himself that led to his commitment to New College, led him to throw himself into New College and play the incredible role that he played there. Uh, you know, becoming dean of the humanities school and so forth and so on, he had a lot of important titles and he did a lot of very important things. But the main thing was he shared the conviction of those of us that were throwing in our lot with this very underfunded life project. He shared the conviction, we can make this world come into being. We can do this together, no matter, no matter how much how difficult it is. I think that's what gave him that attitude toward Parkinson's. It was like Parkinson's was just another hassle, you know, blocking the necessary progress that we were going to make as human beings toward creating a, a beautiful and loving world. So um, he just made a, made a huge difference in my life and in creating this book. He deserves enormous credit for that. and. Uh, we were going to start a program together this fall at the, uh, the Western Institute for Social Research. I know John Bilodowski is here somewhere as the president of Wiser. Uh, on uh, creating a center for social spiritual activism, trying to actualize in, our, in a program what the book's about. And it's created a big hole in my life. It has really disoriented me. And it's a tremendous loss for me to lose. Michael was the great supporter, confirmatory force, person I've been in solidarity with for over 30 years on this particular front. And so, along with Martin and many others in the new college experiment, but in terms of this last book and this last project, Michael was critical to it. So I do feel uh, lost somewhat by his, his death. He and I worked together on this vision, these ideas, right up until a few few weeks ago. So I'll just tell this last story. Don't ring the bell yet. Uh, while we were driving here, uh, 
we we got off and we uh, we had a few minutes extra. And Lisa wanted to see where Michael and Kate lived, and she wanted to see Atchison Village. So we drove over to Atchison Village before coming to the cafe. And when we drove back, uh, a squirrel ran across in front of the car and seemed completely clear of the car. But then it turned around and ran back in front of the car, and I hit the squirrel. And it was lying there in the road as I saw it out of the rearview mirror. And, and it, but it was moving around. So, you know, I, I felt, and Lisa and I talked about what to do, that I couldn't go to a memorial service for Michael McAvoy and not go back and try to save the squirrel. And so, so we drove back, picked up Alistair, who was looking to go in the right direction. Uh, and we, we drove back and looked for the squirrel and Thank God the squirrel was gone. So it, it, at least it had enough energy to get to the other side of the road, and maybe I like to think it recovered. But Michael's sensitivity, his sensibility, his exquisite concern for animals and all living beings was so beautiful and profound. And so I, I, I was glad we went back. You know, I was like, yeah, that's what I'm supposed to do today. Okay, thank you.